We need a president who's going to restore world peace as opposed to this outbreak of warfare under Joe Biden. We need Donald J. Trump back as our president of the United States of America. And there you heard it, Texas Governor Greg Abbott formally endorsing Donald J. Trump for president over his commitment to securing the border. It's a, a tremendous honor to get that endorsement in particular because he really stepped up. He stepped up to the plate. He's doing the job of what the federal government is supposed to be doing. And I'm just telling you, Mr. Governor, I am going to make your job much easier. Washington Examiner Deputy Editor of Restoring America, Kaylee McGee White, joins us now. Kaylee, good morning to you. This is an endorsement I'm sure that Ron DeSantis would have loved to have had because he's been on the campaign trail saying that he would be tougher on border security than Donald Trump ever was and has criticized Trump for not finishing the border wall. So how do you think this endorsement will impact the GOP primaries? I don't think it changes anything substantively in that Trump is already running away with the primary nod, and I don't necessarily think that anything is going to stop that from happening at this point. If anything, this simply bolsters the case for a Trump nomination. Now, the important factor in all of this is, as you guys mentioned, immigration. Abbott and Texas have been carrying the weight of Biden's border crisis for the past few years, and the fact is that he's looking for a candidate who is going to take a lead on tackling this issue. And the thing with Trump is that he not only talks about immigration, he did something about it for four years. You remember back in 2018 and 2019, the U.S. was experiencing a very similar surge in illegal immigration. And the Trump administration came in, implemented a number of policies that effectively, effectively reduced that crisis by more than half. So he has the evidence to prove that he's able to do it again. Kaylee, I think personality got Joe Biden elected in 2020. I think in 2024, assuming it's going to be Biden v. Trump again, I think the American people don't care as much about personality. I think they're looking at the issues from the economy to immigration, and they're saying, look, we need to do something, otherwise we're going to lose this country. And then, on the other hand, a lot of political experts thought, ultimately, immigration got Trump elected in 2016. Do you think immigration gets Trump reelected in 2024? I think it's certainly one of the factors, but I think that you're going to have this phenomenon in 2024 where there are going to be a lot of anti-Biden voters. This happened back in 2020, and I think that this is part of the reason why Trump lost, is many people voted for Biden simply because they didn't want to vote for Trump. I think you're going to have the reverse this time around, because Biden has demonstrated such poor leadership. And the concerns about his age continue to mount. Uh, you don't see those same concerns directed to Trump. So, yes, I do think that Trump's handling of the economy, of immigration, multiple other parts of his record, where people look back at the four years when he was in office and say, you know what, I miss that. And that's why they're going to vote for him in 2024. Yeah, Kaylee, a recent Fox News poll also found that 69 percent of voters are either very or extremely concerned about border security. Mike Pompeo was on with Maria Badaroma yesterday, and he also pointed out that it took Hamas over a year to pl plan their attack on Israel. And those very plans could be happening inside our country right now. So as a matter of both politics with this poll and national security, are you surprised that the Biden administration hasn't done anything on this issue so far? No, because I think that it's an intentional crisis. Again, Trump proved that if you wanted to stop the flood of illegal immigrants across the southern border, you could simply by stating that you're not going to allow them into the country. There, there was an immediate effect when people realized that the Trump administration was serious about cracking down on illegal immigration. He was able to sort of prevent the flow in the first place. Biden hasn't done any of this. He can barely even call what is happening at the southern border a crisis. So you still have floods of people coming back in. And I think that it's important to note that this is a this is an issue no longer just for the border states. Because tens of thousands of migrants are making themselves into democratic states, into these sanctuary cities, other voters in other parts of the country, for really the first time ever, are also having to experience the weight of what illegal immigration costs us. So will this affect votes in, let's say, New York, in Illinois, where Chicago is? It very well could.
and the swing states because now, like you said, all 50 states are border states. Mm -hmm. Before we let you go, I want to get your thoughts on the passing of former First Lady Rosalind Carter, the wife of former President Jimmy Carter, passed away at the age of 96. As we reflect on her life, what are your thoughts on the legacy mm -hmm. she leaves behind when it comes to the office, the position of First Lady? Well, she essentially created the office of the First Lady. She was very involved in Jimmy Carter's administration and proved that a wife doesn't just have to sit on the sidelines. She can be just as involved and be just as active. And the, the thing that I love most about this couple is they were married for more than 77 years. I've been married for three years. I think it's an incredible testament to the power of marriage as an institution. And when so many people in our society seem to not value it anymore, my hope is that we all get the opportunity to get to 77 mm. years someday. Beautifully said. Longest married U.S. presidential mm -hmm. couple lauded by presidents across the partisan spectrum. You had Obama and Trump issuing nice statements. She, of course, did a lot for mental health as well. Kaylee McGee-White, thanks for your time this morning. Appreciate it.